Now, I know what you're thinking. There's absolutely no way I could build a chat application like Slack or Discord in around six minutes. Well, give me a chance and I'll show you how with PubNub. PubNub is built from the ground up to provide a flexible, scalable and secure end-to-end -end messaging infrastructure for chat, multi-user collaboration, data streaming and much more that just works. I'm going to show you an app written in JavaScript with over 50 available SDKs. You'll be able to take what I show you and easily apply it to your own application. As you can see, we have both group chats with multiple participants, as well as private conversations between just two people. Just like Slack or Discord, notice how members have a presence indicator that shows whether they are on or offline. If you want to see that for yourself, duplicate a few of the tabs, which will create additional users, and then when you close those tabs, you'll notice the members go offline. I can send messages from one participant to the rest of the group, and those messages will be received pretty much instantly. There's also a small typing indicator that pops up so you know when someone else is typing. You're not just limited to plain text though. PubNub also supports images, files, markup, emoji and message reactions. So check out our other tutorials for those features. Now, notice how when I switch conversations, the app will load the previous messages in that exchange. That's using PubNub's message persistence feature that, when enabled, stores and archives conversations on the server. This means that any new client who joins a conversation late can easily catch up on what they missed and helps you, the developer, avoid the compliance and security headaches that come with persisting data on the client. To run the app for yourself, simply download or clone the repository from GitHub. You'll find all the links in either the description of this video or in the accompanying tutorial. Then, to connect to PubNub, you'll need a set of publish and subscribe keys. You can get these for free from the PubNub admin portal without entering any card information. Just sign up create an app, and your key set will be generated for you. These demo keys have generous transaction limits that will last you all the way through prototyping. So enable both presence and persistence on the key set, then copy them into the keys.js file. Again, the instructions are all in the tutorial text or the GitHub readme. So let's dive into the source code. With your pub sub keys, the first thing you want to do is create an instance of PubNub. It doesn't matter which of our SDKs you're using, they all look pretty similar to this. And with your instantiated object, you're now ready to start sending and receiving messages. The add listener method is your event handler. It's where PubNub will notify you when events occur. Now, there are more events than this, but you only need three for this app, message, signal, and presence. The message listener is called whenever a new chat message is received, and the payload can be very flexible, but here we're just treating it as a simple text string. Signals are small ephemeral messages that can be sent for short-lived data without guaranteed delivery, and this app uses them for the typing indicator. And finally, the presence event is invoked whenever users go online or offline. This is a flexible concept, and to return to the Slack or Discord analogy, you could have a presence event fire whenever somebody joins or leaves a conversation, but this simplified app just looks at the user's overall presence. Having set up the event listeners, we also need to tell PubNub which channels we want to receive messages and signals on. This is done by subscribing to those specific channels, and you'll notice I can pass a wildcard here to match any channel that starts dm. or public. You could create quite complex channel topologies if you chose to, with different access rules applied to each, but I just have one group for direct messages and one for public channels. If you want presence events, specify that here, and for simplicity, I'm just specifying presence for all channels. Get Active Users calls one of our presence APIs, here now, to give us the online users when the app first launches. After launch, the presence events kick in, which will notify us whenever anyone's online or offline status changes. So all of that is handled by the same common logic, handle presence event. Just pause here and consider what's happening. You could have tens of thousands of users each with their own online status, and whenever that updates, you have to communicate that to whoever is registered for the event. That's a non-trivial problem to do efficiently, especially as you scale, and that's the kind of value that PubNub is bringing you. Next, let's look at the message received function. This is the handler for the message event I declared earlier, and this app relies on a couple of helper functions to generate some HTML around the chat message and displays it on the screen, but you're not limited to sending chat messages the message event itself, will receive an object payload, so JSON in the case of JavaScript, but other SDKs will have their own serializable equivalent, so the messaging system is very flexible. 
What you probably didn't notice, provided you're using the hosted version of this application, is that the text will be moderated. This is implemented using our serverless PubNub functions, which will allow you to intercept and modify messages before they're delivered to clients. Functions are very powerful and can be used for moderation, translation, or more complex features like leaderboards. Although the hosted version of this app just uses a simple banned word list, there's nothing to stop you using a more intelligent moderation heuristic if you wanted to. To add moderation to your own key set, check out our catalog of PubNub integrations. Finally, let's take a quick look at that typing indicator. I said the indicator used the signal event, and you can see the handler for that here, signal received. Notice there is also a separate function to send a signal, which is called whenever the user presses a key in the input field. An internal state is updated based on who's typing, and the message is displayed, which is eventually removed when everyone stops typing. Signals are not limited to typing indicators, however, and can be used for any short-lived data, for example, a user's location or reactions during a live chat stream. So, there you have it, the fundamentals of a chat application with all the essential elements of Slack or Discord in around six minutes. Thank you for watching. We also have other demos, tutorials, and lots of available documentation to help you get started. Please see the links and the text that accompanies this tutorial and sign up for a free set of PubNub keys to start building your first app with PubNub today.